put your heart at the altar, put everything at the altar. You have to think about coming to your father. And God is our father, so everybody has a father, no matter what. God is your father. I think about my little one. He's four when I come home, and he runs to me and says, Mommy, you're here. And he gives me a hug, but before he can run, my arms are wide open. And I come down to his level so that when he comes, he feels as though we're here, we're on the same level, and I embrace him. And he feels safe. So when you think about coming to the altar, you need to think about coming to your father as a child. But he's coming to you where you are. You don't have to be exactly where you think you need to be. He's coming to you where you are, and he's wrapping his arms around you. He's 
are wide open. Come on, be like that child. And just say, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, I'm just here to hug you. I'm here to love you. I'm here to feel your embrace this morning. Come on, if you need his peace, it's right here. It's flowing in the room. Peace is flowing in the room right now. His peace is flowing in the room. Just receive it. Come on, open your arms and receive it. It's here. It's here. Just tell him how much you love him because he's telling you now he loves you. That you're so wonderful. He loves who you are. He loves who he made you. He loves you.
of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Almighty God. We thank you for what you're about to do this morning. We thank you. We position ourselves in a position of strength. We position ourselves under the glory. Father, we position our, your, with ourselves under the atmosphere of your presence. My God, we thank you for the overflow of your spirit. We thank you for the overflow of the spirit of the living God. We thank you for the overflow of the spirit of the living God. We thank you for the overflow of the spirit of the living God. We thank you for the overflow. Overflow and 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 overflow of the presence of the living God. And overflow, and overflow. And overflow. And Jesus. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power and just is the glory forever Amen. Father we thank you I just want to say thank you for the overflow of your spirit in this house I thank you for the overflow of your very spirit at work in our lives Holy Spirit, I just thank you for the overflow. And the overflow, and the overflow. Spirit of the living God, we walk up you this morning. Spirit of the living God, have your way in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies this morning. We are so excited about what you have in store for us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to embrace you, to encounter you to lavish on that presence that is sustaining us day by day. The presence of the presence of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I want you to envision yourself in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because yours is the power and yours is the glory and yours is the kingdom of peace, of glory, of Rabaka yele bosa ma yele le ara rabaka ma yeke tete raka yele le boka ma yete le le bora rabaka ma ye ya ya. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And let the saints say, "Amen." Let the saints say, "Amen." Amen. And Jesus is the kingdom. Tell him. 
if he has been great to your life, why don't you tell him right now? for Jesus. I don't know about you, but I sense that God is about to do something miraculous in your life. I honestly sense a shifting. I don't know about you, but there is this sense of peace that something wonderful is about to happen in your life. I just, I just sense not just for this ministry but for your personal life. I sense very strongly that the Lord is up to something good in your life. Do you believe that? Why don't you clap your hands together for the Lord one more time? And for our wonderful worship team, amen. 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 Please, uh, such a wonderful time to be alive. Tell your neighbor it's wonderful to be alive. Amen, amen, amen. All right, we're going to have i uh, I'm not sure if this is sounding right. Are we okay with this microphone? to be here this morning. Amen, amen. It's a beautiful time. I Just before I bring the word of God to us today, what the Lord has placed in my heart, remember our anniversary is coming up, amen. We're going to be eight years old. Can you believe that? Eight? Wow. I can remember when we started this in our living room, about eight years ago, where it was just me and the children and the family, and and just to see how day after day God begins to just do amazing things in our life, he increases us in every direction. Great things happening all over the globe. What the Lord is doing in His ministry, we just received some pictures from other branches. One of the branches that really excites me the most is the one in Abuja. How, in fact, the overflow is just so amazing. It's amazing. 
Now, before I go to this message, we have some t-shirts that have been made that we're going to be uh, we're going to be giving this out for a price of for a fee of uh, of ten dollars. Amen. Let me show you how it looks like. If you can get the camera, going to use this a lot. Let me show you how it looks like if you get the camera. Going to uh, uh, meet up with Sister Anne to place an order. Amen. You write your name down and the size you want and pay. They will provide you with the outfit. There is no pain when you show up. You pay first. You put your name down. The size you want will give you a copy. I mean, give you a shirt. Is that good enough? Very easy and very seamless. So we don't have to be running after anybody for ten dollars. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you glad to be here this morning? Amen. Now, wh why don't you lift up your Bibles? Let us repeat this after me as we go to the word of God today. Say, This is my Bible. I believe it is the word of God. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, infallible. Word of God. My mind is allowed. My heart is receptive. God's word will transform my life forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now clap those hands together for Jesus. And you may be seated. You know, this month of August is a month of supernatural peace. Somebody say peace. Supernatural peace. You know, many times God gives us his word to set our sail. The word is given to set your sail. That no matter what comes your way, you have been programmed or pre-programmed to walk in peace. I want to talk to us today about the power of peace. The power of peace. Luke 21, 25 to 28 doing mostly from the New King James Version today. It said, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring or raging, and men's heart falling, failing them, from fear and expectation of those things which are to, which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. If you look at the scripture, we see Jesus Christ speaking to us about his coming. So we know that with everything we see happening around us, it's very obvious that Jesus Christ is coming back again very soon. Jesus is coming back again. And the days are drawing much nearer than it was 2,000 years ago. Jesus is coming back. He said, when you see all these things happening, you know, I hardly watch the news, but as I was traveling, I've been traveling a lot lately, and actually I just came back this morning from Houston. And, uh, you know, I, I just have a glimpse of the news, and I can see what's happening in Afghanistan. Lack of peace. People are in turmoil. Just looking for relief. Things are happening so rapidly. People's hearts are filling them. You know, and people are looking for a place where they can experience tranquility. A place where they can have peace of mind. A place where they can just go out of, get out of trouble. And Jesus said, when you see this kind of things happening, remember this, that your redemption draws near. Now tell your neighbor, don't be deceived, Jesus is coming back very soon. He is coming back soon. We know for sure, but it's sooner than it was 2,000 years ago. You know, the peace of God is, a, is so profound. You know, it is the most precious commodity. Peace. So they say peace. You know, it's most precious commodity that Jesus talks about the last days. Jesus talks about the end time. Jesus said, when all these things are happening, be sure that it's coming back again. Jesus tells us in the scripture that we should put our focus on him. You know, where you put your focus on these days, determine whether you walk in peace or not. Where your focus is determines your level of peace. Somebody say peace. A lot of people are trying to have a moment of peace. Maybe through alcoholism. Maybe through all kinds of vices. Just to have a moment. I mean a moment. What did I say? Just a moment. Some just want to drink themselves to the place where they just have that moment of peace. If you but Jesus Christ has promised us an eternity of peace. Peace that lasts forever. You know, I have been around people in my life where they live life without peace. But a life is full of turmoil. And I've lived most of my life experiencing the peace of God. So I know what it is to have peace. And possibly for those I have walked around or counseled to know what it is to not walk in peace. Peace is a profound thing. Somebody say peace. Peace is very profound. Now Jesus Christ mentioned in the scripture, Romans 14 Verse 7, he said, for, the, for God's kingdom is not in eating. 14 verse 17, is not in eating and drinking, but righteousness 
and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So you can tell how close you are to God's kingdom dependent on the amount of peace you have in your life. The measure of peace in your life is, pred is predicated on how close you are to Jesus Christ. It tells us here that, 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 that the proximity to Jesus Christ will always increase the peace in your life. That means that the, the closer you walk with Jesus, the more peace you have and experience. When you walk with Jesus close enough, you have so much peace in your heart. I'm not saying you're not born again. There are many those who are born again but are never walking with Jesus. And you can tell their life is full of chaos with no peace. Everything around them is chaotic. See, but God wants us to experience and to walk in peace. And the thing is that the peace of God is given to us freely when you ask. So it tells us in the scripture, it tells us, as we just read Romans 15, verse 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God wants you to be filled with peace. A life of peace is the best life you can ever experience. And the truth is, the peace is one of the elements of the Holy Spirit. When you read Romans 5.22, it tells us now, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. So what do you say? Peace. Peace. So peace is the fruit of or the seed of love that God wants you to experience in your life. When you have peace in your life, it's an indication that God's kingdom is not ruling in your life. So he tells us we read previously is that God's kingdom is not a matter of drinking or eating, but it is in righteousness, joy, and peace. Peace in the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout peace. Isaiah 6 verse 9 verse 6 tells us, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting father and the prince of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. When you, when you walk with Jesus, you have, you're walking in peace. When you have no Jesus in your life, you have no peace of God. Your life becomes chaotic. When I mean having Jesus in your life, it's not, I'm not referring majorly on being born again because there are many Christians that you know. Maybe it is you that have no peace in your heart. It looks like everything in your life is falling apart. Jesus Christ is the prince of peace. And the Bible tells us he has become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 6 verse 20. Now, Melchizedek is the king of Salem. And Salem means peace. Jerusalem. Salem is peace. Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, is the high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Which means that Jesus Christ is on the order of peace. Everything about God is peace. Somebody say peace. You know, our God is the God of peace and he never uses fear. 
He never uses fear. He always uses peace. Satan will try to keep you away from peace. He will do anything he can to make sure you don't have peace in your heart. I will deal more about that in a moment. But when you have the peace of God in your heart, according to what Jesus has promised, <laughs> you experience the kind of life that is really amazing. I just remember when I was a young, when I was much younger, there was this belief system that I have. I still have it right now. Now tell your neighbor, never fight with anybody. Always walk in peace. Tell the next one, I'm not fighting with you. I am done fighting. I'm after peace. You know, many times people think you are stupid. They think you don't fight for your right, but you know what you're doing. You decide to walk in peace. Not because you are stupid. But you know, peace keeps your life going. It really gets to me as a young boy when I read about the story of Abraham and Lot. And that story stuck to my mind as a teenage boy. Where Abraham told Lot, I don't want to fight with you. You choose one side. I will choose the other. Because I know whatever area I choose, God is always going to be with me. That's peace. It may look wonderful right here. But you want to go there? Take it. I'm going here. It is just a matter of time. You begin to experience prosperity in your life. Peace brings prosperity. Don't allow those who are trying to rush to get things done quickly. Leave them alone. Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, 27, he said, peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the word gives, do I give to you. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You know, when you have the peace of God in your heart, you're not troubled. In almost all my life, I don't, no point fight, not because I cannot fight. I'm big enough to beat up anybody. <laughs> but I just choose to walk in peace. In fact, people have taken things from me, even money, millions from me. So that's okay, just go. You want the car? Take it. You want the house? Take it. With peace, you can get everything back. And more than double. But when you are fighting and forcing, you fight forever. You know, there are some preachers that will tell you life is about fighting. But I'm telling you right now, life is about peace. Constant fighting brings so much turmoil in your heart. So Jesus said that John 14, let's go back there. He said in the scripture, peace I live with you. That means have peace. My peace I give unto you, not as the word gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Don't be stressed out. You are not designed to be walking, living in stress. I will deal with that in a moment. 28 now says, you have heard of me. I'm going away, coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I'm going away and uh, for my father is greater than I. Jesus said, if I go, I would, I'm leaving peace with you. It is I'm leaving you with money. It is I give you money. What it is I give you? Peace. It is not I'm going away. I'm going to give you some money. No. I'm going to give you what? Peace. He said, my peace I live with you. Verse 27. Not as the word gives. Because the peace that Jesus gives is non-circumstantial. It is eternal. It's everlasting. 
is not, and you know, it is easy to get and hard to lose. We need to write that down. The peace it gives is easy to get and hard to lose. The peace the world gives is hard to get and easy to lose. You may get peace from the world, from the world system. You lose it in a moment. Jesus' peace is abiding, eternal, non-circumstantial commodity. But the peace of the world is fragile, elusive. Circumstantial peace is hard to get and easy to lose. You see, we are not designed by God to live in an atmosphere that is not peace. God never designed you to live in an atmosphere where there's no peace. Without peace in your life, you have all kinds of physical problems. Your body has to live in peace to be healthy. Your body. Peace is shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. If there is no peace in your body, it falls apart. If there is no peace in your finances, it falls apart. If there is no peace in your relationship, it falls apart. God never designed you to live your life under stress. Just in case you don't know. The number one reason we are, why people go to the doctor or for prescribed medication is stress. Absence of peace is the presence of stress. Tell your neighbor, I'm done stressing. I'm too blessed to be stressed. So, you know, when you have no peace, you stress. And the enemy plan is for you to be stressed out. But the power of peace brings to the place of enjoying life to the fullest. How many of you would like to enjoy life to the fullest? So I'm ready to enjoy life to the fullest in the name of Jesus. No, life is really good. When I say life is LG, I mean it. Well, because it's good when you walk in peace. No, it's good when you walk in peace. And I'm glad I can tell you this because I live with you on this earth, so it's not like I live a different planet. So I'm not telling you what I don't practice. I cannot take you to where I have not been. It is possible to walk and to live in peace. Are you with me? So when people do you bad, just stay in peace. When they talk bad about you, what do you do? When they try to annoy you and aggravate you to be upset, what do you do? Because it's, for you, it's good for your health. It keeps you healthy. I can't be preaching the message of divine health and I'm stressed out. I'll be sick. No matter how much I preach it. You can't be preaching God heals, but you are stressed, you get sick. You get sick in your relationship, you get sick in your finances, you get sick in your body. Sick everywhere, sickness. Sick in your knee, sick in your eyes. Stress. Stress is number one killer. People are so stressed out. Say, I'm done stressing. You know, why is peace so important? Number one. Peace is how God guides us. You know, that, oh, I, I pray you understand this. You know, there are many things in life that is not in the Bible. Are you with me? The Bible never tells you which college to go to. He never tells you which wife to marry. He never tells you which church to attend. Are you with me? He never tells you which food to eat when it's right there. 
Bible never says don't eat too much of rice. It's not in the Bible. Bible never says don't marry a red haired girl. Or a, bl- you call it blondie? Blonde, that's what it's called. Or a tall, dark man. It never says that. God guides us through peace. Colossians 3 verse 15. So, and let the peace of God rule. Guide your hearts to which you were called in one body. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Many decisions I have made in life, myself and mama, is based on peace, not because the Bible says so. If you are not, if you have no peace, just wait. It may not be there. See, do you know your life today is dependent on decisions you have made? Your decision determines your destiny. And if you make decisions based on how good it looks, you may get in trouble. Life decisions is not just about right and wrong. It could be about right and right. It could all be right. Let's talk about marriage. Both women are beautiful. Both women are resourceful. The, both men you are seeing around that want to marry you, they are so kind and lovely. They are all the same height. They are they make six digit figure. A beautiful house, three cars. Which one do you choose? Which one do you choose? They both look good. Both churches are wonderful. They have good praise and worship. Good pastor. Which one do you choose? So it's not about the pastor. It's about what? Peace. You have peace. There's something that is in your heart that just settles. And anywhere else you go, there is unsettlement. Don't force yourself in an unsettlement circumstances. Let peace, that's how God guides us. So let peace be your guide. Let peace be your umpire. You know, the peace of God is tangible. Don't be fooled. You can feel it. Many of you have gone against peace and just did it anyway. And the result is troublesome. I don't know if you have been there before. I have been. Well, you did something because you are so much in a hurry. And you felt it's not right. It may not be just, it may be not the right time. But you do it anyway. And the result is problem. God may tell you, don't buy that property now. And you are thinking, if I don't buy it now, somebody else will buy it. Let them buy it. If it's yours, it will be there. Don't stress yourself. By the way, you don't, you don't even have enough money to pay for it. You have to borrow money. You are stressed out. So when you allow God's peace to rule in your heart, my, you experience the life I call LG. Peace. Don't allow what other people do to bring you turmoil in your life. See, God guides us by true peace. God will never guide you through anxiety. You see, the absence of peace is profound. Now tell your neighbor, the absence of peace is profound. The presence of peace is profound. They are both very clear. If there is no peace, you will know it. If there is peace, you will know it. So why going against peace which God uses as an umpire? God tells you, don't go with that relationship. So I'm going to go anyway. I like, he has blue eyes. You are going by the eye, the next week his eyes turn green. 
and you wonder what happened to you. But you had no peace in your heart. There are some people that now you are maybe you are here for the very first time or second time. You walked in here and you felt so much peace. But the devil sometimes wants to steal your peace. It brings trouble in your heart. Don't go back there again. The pastor takes too much time. Or the person worships sings for 40 minutes. It should be just 15, quick and dry. <laughs> if it, when God says no, I don't know if you have God ever told no. When God says no, it is true peace. You have no peace. Then he says no. When God says yes, what do you experience? Peace. When he says no, what do you experience? No peace. Easy. You can search the scripture. I mean, there are many things in the scripture where God tells you, don't do this. It's easy. But most of our lives, most of what we have to do, what to wear, is not in the Bible. I mean, there are somebody who asked me, you know, maybe uh, for instance, mama will ask me sometimes, is this outfit good or not? I don't know if you have been to that. She's already feeling it's not okay. Don't wear it. I, or you, you, you women feel the same, do the same. <laughs> you already says it's not okay. Then just leave it alone. Go somewhere else. If I say wear it, then you wear it. Are you sure it's okay? Are you sure? <laughs> Take it out. Wear what will give you what? Peace. So when you are praising God, you, know, you can lift up your hands as, as high as you can. So you are not doing it like this. Are we together? <laughs> Somebody shout peace. When the devil takes away your peace, he has taken away your navigation system. Because peace is like, it's like, it's like a navigation system that guides you. You know, many times you have ministries like this and people come and they want to be leaders quickly. Make me a pastor in STBC. Um, in fact, people have come with degrees. They ask for a meeting. I have meeting with them and they bring certificate. Qualification. I want to be a pastor here. Make me a pastor. But I have no peace. Then they leave. And I'm okay. My peace remains. It's better that way than to make them to be a pastor and begin to trouble my spirit. Somebody shout, peace. Oh, shout, peace. Say peace. When you are walking by peace, when God guides you by peace, you enjoy life. So don't allow the devil to steal your peace. Are you with me? Don't. That is what he wants to do. He wants to steal your peace. So you cannot assume, so you have no peace in your home, no peace in your life. That is the devil's agenda. Don't give him that right. So peace. Because if you lose your peace, how can God guide you then? Then you are in trouble. That is how he guides us. That is how he guides me. Should I travel now or don't travel? No, don't travel. Should I? Just a lot of things in life. It's by peace. Amen? Number two. Peace is how God protects our minds and our heart against satanic attacks of fear and anxiety. If you don't have God's peace, fear and anxiety becomes the order of the day for your life. Always afraid, always having an anxiety because peace is out of your life. So, peace is how God protects us. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. That means it is a choice. Anxiety is not God's purpose for your life. Many Christians, it looks like they're walking around like a chicken with your head cut off. 
I mean, some of you have not seen that because most of you only go buy chicken in Giant and you, you never ask. How many of you have seen a chicken with head cut off? It is very few of you. All of you, know, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> when the chicken have head cut off, it just be doing what? Everywhere. No, but of course, here we just go to Giant. You have the chicken already cut off. You just pick it, you cook it. You have no idea. <laughs> You know, growing up, it's like, I want that chicken. Then they kill it for you and they cook it. Because here, the chicken is already cooked by, already killed by somebody. You don't even know if their blood was spilled or if they were shot. God help us. God says, don't eat any animal with blood, but God have mercy. Many people are sick today because they are eating animals with blood in it. The blood were never drained. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Let me not, let me not scare you. <laughs> Please keep eating your chicken, amen? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and, you see, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding with God, your heart, and your mind through Jesus Christ. Peace of God. Peace is a fortress. And the devil cannot penetrate it in the name of Jesus. Peace protects you. Peace makes you not to worry. With peace you are not stressed. Because you're walking in peace. That's why God wants us this month of August as a month of spiritual peace to get back on the track of walking in peace in your life, in your relationships, in your family, in your finances, in your health. Somebody shout hallelujah. Peace. Number three. Peace is a platform for your ministry. Peace. Ephesians 6 verse 15, he said, and having your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So the gospel you are supposed to preach is that of peace. Not hatred. Not God is going to kill you. Not you are going to hell. It's peace. What is a Peace. It's the gospel of peace. I'm reading chapter 6, verse 15. Peace. Because peace is so attractive to unbelievers. That's what they are looking for. But you have it for free. Unbelievers are looking for peace. God says every day, you should put on the gospel of peace. Remember, this, this is the armor of God. Put on the gospel of peace. When you walk in the peace of God, it makes you attractive to people. You want to be attractive? It's not about how much grammar you speak. It's not how much scriptures you know. It's how much peace they can see through you and in you. <laughs> Nobody wants to be around somebody who is always full of turmoil, up and down. Oh, peace. What tell your neighbor peace? Say it again. Say the next one again. Yes, peace. So when you walk in peace, it makes you very attractive. Number four, peace is the purpose of your influence and your ministry. Matthew 5 verse 9. Matthew 5 verse 9. Matthew 5 verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Now tell your neighbor, you are a peacemaker. You better be one. In the name of Jesus. Now let's, let me give you a scripture and try to explain some things in Mark chapter 4, 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. He said, on the same day when the evening had come, 
it said to the disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Let us cross over. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat onto the boat, so that it had already filling. 38, but he was in stern asleep on a pillow. And they woke him up and said, Master, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus has so much peace. Even in the storm. And everybody was all stressed out. He's a prince of peace. 39 now says, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? See, fear and peace does not mix together. It's like oil and water. How is that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can, be, who, 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 who can this be that even the wind and the seas obey him? See, Jesus rebuked the wind. Jesus could do that Why his disciples could not. Why is that? Why could Jesus rebuke the wind? His disciples could not do that. See, the sea. looks like their heart. Their heart is raging. Their heart is unsettled. Their heart is troubled. Their heart is so fearful. When Jesus spoke this, the, and stopped, the storm stopped and the storm looked like Jesus' heart. You cannot give away what you don't have. You cannot command peace in your environment if you have no peace yourself. Your environment will always manifest your inner nature. Your environment will always manifest what is on the inside. You cannot release peace if you have no peace on the inside of your heart. Jesus said, peace be still. He gave peace because he had peace. Disciples have no peace. They couldn't release peace because they were scared. They were full of anxiety. That's why today as we, as we, as we talk about the power of peace, I pray that as I begin to share with you how to get this peace, you will subscribe to the message. Amen? Your environment will always manifest your inner nature. Now, tell your neighbor your environment, your environment will always manifest what is on the inside. So, instead of working on the environment, work on the inside. If your inside changes, the environment changes. If there is no peace in your home, check your heart is troubled. If your environment looks very chaotic, because your own inside is chaotic. Are you with me? If you have your uh, if you have your clothes everywhere in your living room, I'm talking to some of you right now. Nothing is in order. Everything chaotic. Bedroom chaotic. Living room chaotic. Even your kitchen is chaotic. Your dishes all over on the sink. Okay, I'm talking to somebody right now. Even your hair is chaotic. Everything just not working. Even your car is. Even your driving is what? Is from the inside. 
if there is no inner peace, it reflects on everything around you. Reflect on your children, reflect on your spouse, reflect on your BFF, reflect on every aspect of your life if you have no peace. There are two kinds of people. Peacemakers or troublemakers. Which one are you? If your heart is like a raging sea, you have no peace in your relationship. Or wherever you go, because the environment will always manifest your inner nature. It's not about where you go. If you can't walk on the inside of peace of God, everywhere you go will be problem. It's not location. It's you. Now tell your neighbor, walk on you. You need a peace in your heart. Are we still together? How do you get this peace? Let's talk about that as we, as we try to round up. How do you get this peace? Number one, submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Submit. You know, Jesus should not just be your savior. It should be your what? Your Lord. It should be your Lord. That means that you are submitted to his lordship, to what he tells you. Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and verse 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, and it tells us that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, verse 7, of the increase of his government, verse 7, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. That is in verse 7. No end. His peace is everlasting. When you submit to his lordship, you have peace. Somebody say peace. Peace everywhere. Peace. Because it is what is on you that determines what is on the outside of you. Somebody say peace. Bible tells us in James 4 verse 7, when you submit to God, you have the peace of God. When you don't submit to the government of God, there is no peace. James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and what will he do? Not run. You will do what? You will not run. What will he do? Flee. When you submit to God, no rulership. When you say, God, I depend on you. I can't do this on my own. I, I submit to your lordship. That leads to the devil being out of your life. Because when, when you don't submit to the God's, Jesus' lordship, the devil becomes your lord. When the devil is your lord, you have so much anxiety. Your level of anxiety, write this down, just coming fresh from the press. Honestly, I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm going to say, but I know it's going to be good. So trust me, I don't, I don't even know. But your level of stress in your life is equal to your allowance of the devil rulership over your life. Your level of stress in your life is equal to the devil's rulership. If you have more stress, the devil got you more. If you have less stress, the devil got you less. How much does the devil got you? Say none. When you don't submit to Jesus Christ and his government, the peace of God will not manifest in your life. Who you submit to, your government manifests in your life. Now, if there's an area in your life that is out of order, it's because you have not submitted that area to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Maybe everything is okay with your health, but not your relationship. Maybe your finances are out of order, but maybe not in your health. Any place out of order in
in your life is an indication you have not yet submitted that area of your life to Jesus Christ. Do you talk to God about your money? Do you pray to God about your finances? Or you just complain to him? You know, you know many people, they just, when they talk to God, they just complain. They complain. That, that takes me to, to the next point of how to get this peace. It's fervent, faith-filled prayer. You have to pray. You know, prayer is indication of dependency on the one you pray to. Philippians 4, verse 6 to verse 7. We'll go back there again. You said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Some say, but I don't know how to pray. Let me show you how to pray. Easy. Easy way. I mean, if you, I mean, if you have a piece of paper and a pen at home. You have at home? Write down everything that is stressing you out. Are you with me? Everything that is troubling your mind, your every area, write it down. Don't complain to God about it. Just give it to him. Are you with me? You say, God, I give you all this stress. I give you all this problem in my marriage, in my finances, in my health. I give it all to you, and I'm walking away free. Amen. That is how faith-filled prayer can bring peace into your life. That's why I love what Peter says in First Peter 5, verse 7. He says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. You transfer the burden on the Lord. It's not. <laughs> oh, let me tell you again. Do you know God knows what you're going through? He doesn't want you to tell him. He knows already. Do you know he knows everything? He knows your stress? This is what he wants you to do. Give it to him. And walk away. Are you with me? See, like, this is the God. It's like say, God, you know, I'm going through this. My finances is out of work. My children are just cussing me out every night. Uh, whatever it is you're going through, say, God, I give it to you, and I'm walking away. No, no. Many Christians do. They just tell it to Him like He doesn't know, and carry it again with them. In a the moment, some of you will come to the altar. You pray. Instead of you to leave it on the altar. You go back again talking about the same problem. That means you never left it there. You just complain and complain. God is not interested in your complaint. He's interested in your faith. So what they say, faith. So you transfer it to God. That's how you pray. That is how some of us can live a life of ease and peace. We just tell God and we just leave it there. We don't even bother. Many times we, we don't even pray more than once. We just pray one time and leave it. But let me give you this little thing you should also learn. Don't stop praying about something until you feel peace in your heart. It is the peace that you experience that is an indication that you've left it alone with the Lord. But if after praying, you still trouble, you still troubled about it. It means you've not left it. That's what we used to call in those days praying through. Pray through until they, they push until something happens. It's like praying through until you have peace. If I pray for something and it doesn't happen to me, I just leave it alone. I have already prayed. God already knows. I've left with him already. Why am I going to be troubled? Why am I having a sleepless night? I told you the other day. The Bible says God neither sleeps nor slumber. Say with me, God neither sleeps nor slumber. So I can sleep and slumber. You should take that to heart. That means go and sleep. Stop having sleepless nights. God is watching over you. He 
care so much about you. Don't why are you so worried and stressed out about what you cannot change. If you can change it, what do you do? Change it. If you cannot change it, what do you do? Leave it alone unto God. Are we still together? How do you know you've prayed enough for you have peace? Number three. Get this peace. Have a mindset towards God. Let your mind be focused on God. Not on problems. Whatever your mind is focused on is what you experience in your life. It tells us, look up, for you know your redemption is drawing near. I make this statement in, in, in one of my quotes. I believe it goes like this. If life ever knocks you down, make sure you land on your back and look up. Because if you can look up, you can get up. It is never over until you win. You'll be destined to win and there's nothing the devil can do about it. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Just keep looking up. Your redemption draws near, Jesus said. When you have things raging, see it's raging, see, represent people. Troubles everywhere, just keep looking up because if you can look up, you can get up. Where your mind is, makes a difference on the level of peace you experience in your life. So we go now to Isaiah 26 verse 3. He said, you will, Isaiah 26 3, you will keep him in perfect peace. You will keep him in perfect peace. Who will? God. Those whose mind I stayed on you because he trusts you. When you put your mind on God, you have perfect, not, not, in perfect peace. What, what kind of peace? Perfect peace. That's the peace that God gives. Romans 8 verse 5 and verse 6. For those who live according to the flesh. Set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according the spirit. Set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Is what? Someone talk to me. Is what? Life. When you are spiritually minded, you have life, Zoe life, you have peace, shalom. When nothing is missing and nothing is broken. Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up. Say with me, I'm looking up. I'm lifting up my head for my redemption draws near. Now let me tell you something I've also engaged in, in life that helped me a lot. Fear is expecting the devil to move. Faith is expecting God to move. And I have thought about that a lot growing up as a young boy. Because any anytime you are afraid, you are expecting devil to move on your life. When you have faith, you are expecting God to move in your life. Your mind, say my mind, is set by me. Nobody sets your mind for you. Whatever you set your mind on determines you have peace or not. Set your mind on the things above. Set your mind on spiritual things. Set your mind on the things of God, not on what you're going. I know you're going through something. Trust me. Everybody goes through something. Some of us just don't know because we just keep going looking up. If you ask me right now if I have any problem, I will tell you I don't even know if I, if 
I've won or not because my mind is so focused on things above that I don't even know if I have a problem. Because it is what you are focused on that manifests in your life. So number, th- number three was what? Have a mindset towards God. Expect faith, expect God to move. Why fear? Expect the devil to move. Don't be afraid. There's no point to fear. The only thing to fear is fear itself. Number four. Are we still together on this? You have to depend, number four, how to get this peace. Daily dependence on the Holy Spirit. Like I told you the other day, you know, I have a lot of things to take care of. Both the church here, church in country of Uganda, church in Nigeria, just children, six children, just a lot of stuff. I can't even name all of them, the things I have to deal with every single day. I get messages every day, every day from people everywhere. Those in church, those out of church, those that I don't even know about problems and problems. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, my mother wondering, how, how do you do all this? You know, it's, it's a peace of God. So I get up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, I depend on you. Give me peace. Let me experience your peace today to the highest dimension. That no matter comes my way, I am not dragged down. So I tell the Holy Ghost that I depend on him. Because we read chapter 5, Galatians 22, that the peace is, one of these, peace is on the list of, of, of you know, of, I call this, 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 the seed of love. So peace is in there. You know, somebody asked me a question, on, somebody asked a question on, um, on Wednesday, Bible study, about emotions. You know, your emotions is like engine. I don't know if you have ever driven a car before. I don't know if you have a car. If you have no car, say amen. Okay, so we, we all have cars, so nobody should be getting a new one right now. It happened one time I was preaching. Something like this came up. Somebody have no car, and somebody in this congregation decided to give them a car. Who wants a new car? You now look at them now. <laughs> Hands are up now. <laughs> so, your, Im, your car runs better when the engine oil is in the engine. If there is no oil in the engine, your car would knock. It's called the engine knocking. But when the engine has oil, may you drive that thing you enjoy that car. It has oil. If it has no oil in it, it's troublesome. So your emotions, you ask the question on Wednesday. Your emotions, tap that sister. Make sure she's following me. So your emotions is like engine. It runs better with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Once you commit your life and your emotions to the Holy Ghost, he oils every part of your heart. But no matter what happens with the, with the Holy Spirit as, as your main source, you have so much peace in your heart. Your heart is no more troubled. Every single day you need to pray and ask the Holy Ghost to help you. You have to pray. Your prayer, let him know you depend on him. Not on yourself. Not on what the psychologist told you. Some of you have saved you thousands of dollars already. I'm going to see in some psychology somewhere. Because what you are hearing, if you are playing your heart, you have so much peace in your home. In your finances. In your marriages. Among your children. Where there is no forcing and there is no stress. Somebody shout peace. Number four is depending on the Holy Spirit. Your emotions when it's, when, when it's well oiled and lubricated by the Holy Ghost 
you have peace in your heart. Number five. Number five. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Bible tells us, and that is the end one, that is the last one. Bible tells us in uh, Isaiah 61, verse 1 to verse 3, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to the captives, and opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lack of peace is the presence of the spirit of heaviness. And God says, having put on the garment of praise, you have to put the garment on. Nobody can praise God for you. Are you with me, brother? Nobody can praise God for you. You have to praise God for yourself. You put on the garment of, of spirit of what? Heaviness. When you begin to praise the Lord in the midst of diverse circumstances, the peace of God begins to flood your heart. Psalm 149, verse 5 to verse 9, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Wow. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people. To bind their kings and chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. The, this honor of all is saint. What are we saying here? Praise and worship. Can bring about peace in your life. If you want to experience the peace of God in your heart. One thing you must do, number one, submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Let him be your Lord for real. Number two, fervent, faith-filled prayer. Number three, a mindset that is towards God and not towards problems. Number four, your daily dependence. I mean daily, not only, not only on Sunday. Every day, dependence, letting him know, the Holy Ghost know, that you depend on him for your daily dose of peace. Number five, praise and worship. Somebody say hallelujah. Peace is the only way to live. Jesus came to reconcile us to God. Jesus came as the prince of peace. He came as a prince of peace. He just wants us to live that life of peace. The power of peace cannot be overemphasized. We're going to pray right now. Let everyone rise up as we pray. Peace is the only way to go. It's the only way to live your life. If you are lacking peace, any area of your life, God wants you to ask for peace in that area. Today, God wants to give you peace. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, obviously, you don't have the peace of God in your heart. 
As the song is being played right now, I'm going to sing this special song. If you are here with us, and you don't have Jesus in your life, and, uh, you know, today you can make that decision to follow Jesus. To, to receive the life of Jesus, the life he offers. If you have no Jesus in your heart, today can be the day. Go ahead, sing the song. Number two, if you lack peace in your life, today you can ask God for peace. Free. Repeat again. If you want to be born again, Deliver. you can do it today. If you like peace and in I any area joy. of your life, Deliver. the Lord has placed in your heart to be a part of this ministry. Now, this is a, this is a very good church. Not because I'm the pastor, because I've seen. Our people's lives have changed and our people's lives have been transformed Free. by the spirit of the almighty God. Free. So if you are here, number one, you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Deliver. Number two, there are areas of your life that you need the peace of God to begin to manifest. And number three, you want to be a part of this ministry as the song is singing, as the song is being sung, make your way to the altar. If you, if you fall into this one of these categories right now in the name of Jesus. of I don't want anyone to know what I'm going through. This is a moment that God can bring about a change in your life. When you step forward, what it does, it tells God that you mean business with him. You may say, but God is everywhere. He's right there where you are. But that step forward is a step of faith that brings about a change that can last forever in your life. You want to be born again. You want the peace of God in some areas in your life. Only you know which area it is. You want to be a part of this ministry. As the song is playing for the next few minutes, just join us on the altar. I'm going to pray for you. Forgiven. Forgiven, no more chains, no more, chains. No more fear. fear, my past.
precious Father, Lord, you know what you do with people's life. You know how you do it. They've come forth to this to the altar, Lord, because they trust you. Some have come to receive Jesus in your hearts. Some have come just to have peace in that area in their life that they are lacking peace. Lord, you know everything. And some just want to be a part of this ministry. But I pray right now for every man, every woman that's come forth. Maybe even those in the sanctuary that uh, for some reason are not out in, this, in the altar. But I pray that that peace that you give, that passes all, on all human understanding, I pray you give it to them even now by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Whatever the anxiety may be, I decree today every anxiety be gone in the name of Jesus. Let it be a release of peace in their life. I pray in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, peace can be released and can be transferred. Because Jesus, you said, if we enter a place, we should release our peace in that place. Lord, right now, release the peace of God that is at work in my life, in this house, in the ministry, over to their lives as well. They will have peace. 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 And right now is the moment to take is the day I've been changed. I've been changed. Have waited. Have waited for this moment to come. And I won't let it pass. Be
changed. You'll be changed. Right now.
of you came out for prayer moments ago, after the service today, a team of leaders will be meeting with you in the conference room. Uh, don't just rush away and go home. Uh, you can hang out a little bit. They'll give you some materials. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The conference room is right, second, third door to my right. They'll meet you there. They'll meet with you there very briefly. They will not take more than seven to ten minutes just to give you some materials that will help you in this new work, whatever you came for. I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is at work in your life already. Somebody say amen. Now we're going to receive an offering right now as uh, we get our offering, receive the offering before we dismiss the service today. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Let all rise. Lift up your offerings, your seed, your tithe. Remember, we give not by compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. 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 All right, lift it up. Let me let me let me let me bless your giving today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Repeat after me. I would live and declare the goodness of God in the line of the living. Just before the offering, that was very quick. There's somebody here that is afraid of dying from COVID. Where are you? Quickly, run very fast. You have, you have, the fear is so strong in you. Very fast, quickly. You are the one. Just come very quickly. Don't waste time. You are afraid. This fear is so strong in you of dying. You think you might die. Where are you? Quickly. Where is that person? To the count of three, if you are the one, come on very quickly. Let me pray for you very fast. Very fast. Don't come after the, after the service. The Lord told me you are so afraid of losing your life. You are afraid of dying of COVID. But God wants to remove that fear from your heart right now. Where is that person in the sanctuary? asking to do right now. Give me the oil, please. Stand right there. Say in the name of Jesus, the spirit of fear is banished from my life. I would live and not die and declare the goodness of God. In the line of the living, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As I lay my hands on you, Jesus. I decree the name of Jesus. Every fear is gone. Peace to reign in your health. Peace to reign in your mind. Peace to reign in your life. No more fear. You would live and not die. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. It doesn't matter who have died. You are not dying. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. That's it. All right, all right. Lift up your offering. Let, let, let us pray. I decree your offering is blessed. Amen. Everyone giving today what lifts your hand goes into your future. Never leaves your life. I decree a hundred forty return Amen. to everyone giving right now. Perfect return Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As the song is played, the ushers will guide you. Make your way towards the wall. Give your offering back to your seat in the name of Jesus. What's bigger than you? What's stronger than you? It don't exist. It don't exist. What's more powerful or in control? It don't exist. It don't exist. Who else can rescue me? Supply all my needs. They don't exist. They don't exist. Who else can make me whole and save my soul? They don't exist. For you, you are greater.
wonderful time to worship with everyone that is here today. But we know that the Lord has always blessed us every single week. We have those that the Lord has led to come to worship with us for the very first time. When you come for the first time, we don't see you as a as a guest per se, but you're actually a first time attendee. Amen. You have become in our eyes a part of the family. And God never makes mistakes. You know, he led you here. But we want to appreciate you for being here today. If this is your very first time, we have a gift for you right where you are. Do you mind waving at me? Have a gift. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you over there, over there, over there, all the way in the back there. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 I'm so glad that you came. The service was designed with you in mind. If you have any questions whatsoever about what we do here, besides checking us out in the website, you can always talk to one of the leaders that is that has given you the material that you have in your hand. And I believe that the Lord would with you in mighty ways. I believe he led you here today. And if you sense the peace of God in your heart as you've come to be with us today, it can be an indication that this is a home for you. You are welcome. We appreciate you. And we thank God for your life. Amen. Amen. Let's be honest together for our first time at Tandis in the name of Jesus. I want to go by. Let us rise. Let's write release a special blessing upon you. I decree this is your best week ever. This week, you will, you will experience the kind of peace that you would know is only come from God. Amen. There will be peace in your home, peace in your family, peace in your health, peace in your finances, in your relationships in your own life in the name of Jesus Amen. I decree you are blessed I decree you are favored no evil will come near your way Amen. the goodness of God will overtake you in the name of Jesus say with me I have been destined to win, I have been destined to win. and there is nothing, and there is nothing the devil can do about it in Jesus, name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's do this together. One, two, three, read. We, we are, are the righteousness of God, royalty, victorious, and overcomers, and have been destined to win. And there is nothing the devil can do about it. We are divinely protected and crowned with favor, walking in divine health and prosperity, and carriers of the presence of God. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and from evermore. Amen. God bless you. God bless I can't you. God bless go you. Back we'll see you back on Wednesday by the way studies. you used to be before your presence. Hey.